Let's talk about atomizing solid carbon. Taking carbon atoms in the solid lattice, breaking all the carbon-carbon bonds, and making atomic carbon in the gas phase. Now if I do that, I have to break carbon-carbon bonds, and the easiest way to think about carbon, although it has the several forms, the diamond and the graphite, it's easy to think of carbon bonded to four other carbons, sp3 hybridized. So here's the diamond form and the graphite form, and then here I've written just a, a lattice of one carbon bonded to four other carbons. So this is a schematic way to think about solid carbon. The question I have for you, if I go from this solid carbon and I break those carbon-carbon bonds and that requires energy, I'm going to have to put in a lot of energy to break carbon-carbon bonds and make atomic carbon, how many carbon-carbon bonds do I have to break per carbon atom released? Is it one, two, or four? Think about that for a minute and make a selection. Let's look at a possible explanation for each answer. A, one bond releases a carbon from the surface, and then the process continues for the next layer, so one bond for each carbon. Or B, carbons share bonds on an average of two bonds per carbon. Or C, each carbon has four bonds to other carbons, so four must be broken per carbon. Think about that for a minute and make a selection. We're talking about atomizing carbon from the solid to atomic carbon in the gas phase. Now, one thing I often do when I'm thinking about a scientific problem is I think about the reverse of the problem to give me some insight to the forward problem. And I'm going to do that now. So what would it take to create carbon lattice from carbons that are just atoms? How would I build it up? Well, here I'll take a carbon atom and two bonds and then take another carbon atom and add two bonds, and take another carbon atom and add two bonds, and I'll keep doing that, and I think you can see, for each carbon atom I add to the lattice, I need to make two bonds to continue the lattice. So in general, if I'm breaking those bonds and doing the reverse of this, every carbon I remove, I have to break two bonds. So this is a case where looking at this reverse reaction gives me some insight on the forward reaction. It's going to require breaking of two carbon-carbon bonds for every carbon atom released. In this case, the correct answer is B, two.